There was a time in the 80s, yes, there was a time called the 80s, when families actually gathered around the television together. If you're still doing it, God love you. Uh, they gathered around to watch other families on sitcoms like this. You also said that total honesty is essential to a happy marriage. I said that after we were married? <laughs> Growing Pains would star our friend and Canadian Alan Thick. But hey, even good TV families have their own issues. Alan's TV son, Kurt Cameron, came under fire earlier this year for controversial statements he made about homosexuality. It's detrimental and uh, ultimately destructive to so many uh, of the foundations of civilization. We'll see how Alan feels about Kirk these days and about the lives of child stars. Because over a career that spanned nearly 50 years, Alan has kind of seen it all. He broke into showbiz here at CBC with Tommy Hunter, then moved to LA where he worked with cats like Bill Cosby and Richard Pryor. Wasn't always easy though. In the 80s, he went head to head with Johnny Carson as a late night talk show host. He lost, but it did lead to growing pains something Alan remains proud of. And now he's come full circle, returning to Canada to perform on stage in Queen for a Day, the musical. When it comes to talk, baby, never get Everybody, please welcome back to the program, Alan Dick! Hey, 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 dear. Nice to see you. How nice. You well? Know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, fun. This that play that you're doing, this musical, it's kind of the beginning of reality, wasn't it? Queen for a Day? Yeah, it's, uh, quite interesting. Queen for a Day was a, uh, uh, a big radio show in the States uh, in the 40s and then became a television show in the 50s. It really was the forerunner of contemporary reality shows. And beyond that, even uh, the, like those makeover she shows. She is Mrs. Clarice Singer. I found you Queen Jerry. Queen for a day. That really is the beginning of all yeah. of this stuff. It's the beginning of so many things on uh, on television. The beginning of the uh, makeovers, where you literally pluck somebody out of the audience, as they do in Prices Right. Come on down. They would take uh, women out of the audience. They would tell them. Uh, to, the ladies would tell their sob stories, and they use some of them very tragic stories. And what was it? What do you need? What could we do for you? And sometimes be a, a prosthetic leg. I mean, it was it people uh, in need, and the show would be able to provide that. And they gave them uh, all kinds of prizes beginning of product placement. It's an amazing career, the one that you've pulled off. Let's go all the way back to this. What, what would you tell this guy? The English are indifferent. The Maritimes are poor. Vancouver's full of potheads. Montreal is insecure. And our leader chases women. His trendy suits are making news. And we all got good reason to sing the Canadian blues. Oh, talk. That's when the show called the Dallas Stuff. 1969. Wow. For CBC. Yeah. I, uh, well, I, I'm speechless. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember that guy. I probably wouldn't like him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was. I, I, yeah, that was uh, Lorne Michaels. Uh, since of uh, Saturday Night Live fame, who created all of these wonderful characters that have grown out of SNL. He was our producer back then. He put together, blame him <laughs> for, for that. that. At that time, do you think that, do you have any concept of what's ahead of you in your career? No, you know, the, the uh, wonderful thing for me has been the uh, great variety of my career. I've often said if I could have been uh, 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 Rick Mercer or, or George Strombolopoulos or uh, Christopher Plummer or Robin Thicke, I would have been. But instead of me being able to do anything particularly well, I did a bunch of things that were fun and I did them okay. And it gave me a, a great variety and a chance to ba basically do something different every day. My career has been different just about every day. And the musical theater is a wonderful uh, opportunity for me and uh, great fun to do, but uh, that, that's really what my reward has been. Uh, I, I wrote for a lot of comics uh, on television, Richard Pryor, Flip Wilson, Bill Cosby, and at the same time, if I heard there was an opening on the music staff for a country show, mm -hmm. I wrote Glenn Campbell, Mac Davis, Ann Murray, I did uh, all of her specials, uh, and then, so, so you, you kind of move around. I Johnny Cash, I wrote all of those shows. So it was, it was a wonderfully varied experience and that is what the CBC gave me. Think of your, the list of people you just named. 
people that did you learn from them as to how oh, to I be? learned from all of them and, and well, uh, what did you learn from Johnny Cash uh, <laughs> actually, uh, Johnny Cash. I, I didn't. I didn't know what I learned from Johnny Cash until I saw the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I brought my dad, who's a doctor, down to the studio to see a, a taping of the show that we were doing, and uh, uh, he was happy to meet uh, Johnny and June. And June said, uh, uh, "You know, Doctor Thick, uh, Johnny's got this terrible toothache. I wonder if you have a painkiller or any kind of medication for him." My dad, being a good guy. Uh, came up with it. Later on, we found that they had a painkiller doctor, Dr. Feelgood, in every town. Nice. And that became part of uh, uh, Johnny's problem, you know, for many years. So my, my dad was uh, culpable. <laughs> Dad's a of that. pusher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More with Alan Thick after this. <laughs> All right, stick around because the connection between Alan Thick and Brad Pitt is on the way. Plus. <laughs> You know, SCTV, My Big Fat Greek Wedding, Andrea Martin, we love her, she's next. Hold on to your hats, it's going to be a bumpy ride. You know, this has been a pretty good first day at my new school. Jeez, I sound like James Dean in Rebel Without a Cause. <laughs> ben, what are you doing? Watching Carol flirt with some guy and he's not Bobby. Well, that's none of your bit. What guy? <laughs> that was Alan Fitt. So. It's kind of weird to hear Brad Pitt talk about his first day in high school. Yeah. Brad Pitt goes on that show. Well, we, we uh, had a lot of them pass through uh, uh, our studio because the show was hot, and uh, every young actor, every agent wanted to get their actor on uh, Growing Pain. So uh, we, we had Brad, we had uh, Matt Perry, we had uh, Jenny Garth and Hilary Swank and uh, Leonardo, of course, a lot of, a lot of people. Did you know that Kirk Cameron was going to become the Kirk Cameron he is today? Because you've got into it on Twitter. He's become, uh, fundamental faith is fine if that's his faith, Christianity. But did you, could you see something happening? No, I, I could never uh, uh, have predicted that he didn't believe in dinosaurs. Because um, uh, he really, you know, <laughs> creationism goes back for Kirk uh, maybe 6,000 years or so. Uh, but I, I, you know, I have mixed feelings about it. I don't happen to share uh, Kirk's uh, opinions or feelings about uh, religion or, uh, or same-sex marriage or a lot of things that he uh, uh, proselytizes about now, but I, I, I respect uh, free speech and, and I respect that Kirk, uh, and, and I even saw some of why he would go there. Uh, unless you've been, uh, a, you know, to, he was the Justin Bieber of our day. And there's no privacy in that. Uh, he really uh, was living a very unusual life for a 15-year-old. Uh, nobody can relate to it unless they've really gone through that. And uh, his way of dealing with it was to internalize a little bit, privatize, pull back, uh, and he found solace in religion. And uh, of all the things that could happen to child actors, God bless them for finding that. Right. You know, so many of them have, uh, have had tragic outcomes, either with uh, drugs, alcohol, weapons, uh, uh, suicides. Uh, it's a very tough, unnatural life for a 15-year-old. All right, anthropology. Who had a better wedding, Kim Kardashian or Wayne Gretzky? Uh, well, Wayne's was definitely longer lasting. Uh, the Kardashian so that should uh, factor in. was a bit of a blur. With Queen for a day, which, which is more important to you, Dairy Queen or Queen Latifah? Uh, I, I would say uh, Latifah, uh, partly because she's kind of a friend of the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in fact, she was at Robin's wedding, which uh, was held at my ranch uh, when he married Paula. And a uh, delightful uh, woman. So I'd have to say, yeah, on a personal basis, Dairy Queen is close second. <laughs> <laughs> Most influential queen in your life, Elizabeth, Freddie Mercury, or the University in Kingston? Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to say uh, Freddie Mercury because uh, he was a guest on uh, Thick of the Night, uh, which had few sparkling moments. <laughs> I mean, you want to talk about the turd list. Uh, <laughs> That show uh, was a, a bit of a debacle, but uh, we did have Freddie uh, Mercury on. Well, you got, you've done a lot of stuff on fatherhood, too, obviously not just playing one, but written books about it. What's the best piece of advice your mom ever gave you? My mom ever gave me? Uh, 
I don't know that I could uh, 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 narrow it down to just one because my mom was uh, the most wonderful, generous soul and spirit uh, ever. Uh, uh, I miss her. She's been gone for a, a few years now, but uh, just in terms of love and the outpouring of everything, the, the, the one greatest thing she ever did for me was surprise me on my 17th birthday uh, out of the blue with something that I never asked or wished for and looked at and said, what the, what am I going to do with it? It was a guitar. And it was just because she was a music fan. She was all very kind of contemporary that way, keeping up with uh, you know television, movies, uh, recordings. And she bought me a guitar just because she thought that would be something I'd be interested in. And uh, the reason I learned to play it at the University of Western Ontario was uh, it was a period in which if you knew a couple of Gordon Lightfoot songs, the girls would like you. <laughs> and uh, so I quickly learned a couple of those and uh, was always grateful to my mom for that. Which was your, I bet you that's exactly what she intended when she gave you the guitar, was to be a part of your life in yeah, that respect. Yeah, yeah. What was your closing song to get the girl? Uh, yeah, softly she comes. La da 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 da. <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. Yeah. Very good to see you, man. Hey, you always coming. a pleasure, George. Thank you. Alan, thank everybody. Theme for a day, the musical. It's actually on stage now. You got to check it out. Alan, thank you, right back.